So the spectrum of, of, of the LIBOR-based instruments is very, very, very wide. And the total notion of LIBOR instruments is around 300 trillion. So it's, it's huge, it's massive. Welcome to The Big Explainer. Funding markets are essential to the financial plumbing of the global system. Businesses and consumers across all parts of the economy will probably have loans or mortgages that were referenced off LIBOR in its various forms. LIBOR is a benchmark of which an estimated $300 trillion worth of products are referenced. That's the equivalent of over four times the size of the global economy. This is a huge market and a key but also normally mundane component of the financial system. Funding markets were, however, brought into sharp focus during the financial crisis of 2008. LIBOR was then hit by a price-fixing scandal that has influenced an overhaul of this massive market, with the changes to be implemented by the end of next year. So what is LIBOR? I asked Alex Hardwan, Head of Rates at Refinitiv, for an overview. LIBOR is, just refers to London Interbank offered rates. So it means it's a rate, um, it is representative of the rates at which large institutions, large banks could fund them, uh, themselves in selected currencies for certain, certain tenors. So it has been there for almost, since the eighties, pretty much. Um, it is across five currencies. It was, it is still based because it is still active. That's what you have to, that people have to understand. It is based on submissions provided by 20 banks. So normally these submissions are attended to reflect where the market is. The thing is that back in 2013, 2014, there has been some manipulations of those submissions, meaning that the banks that were submitting LIBORs were submitting a rate which was not the rate effective on the market, but the rate, the level of the rate at which they, they want that rate to be. So that has caused a big uh, issue on the market that everybody, everybody talked about at, um, at that time. LIBOR is a generic name. In reality, there are a number of different IBORs for different currencies. I mentioned five currencies. So l the L or LIBOR stands for London, but IBOR is used, of course, in, uh, in, U in UK, in US. Um, in the Eurozone, there is an equivalent called Euribor, which is the uh, Euro version of the LIBOR. And then you have LIBOR in, in a lot of different geographies. So when we are talking about LIBOR transition, it's not only the LIBOR per se, but it's all those um, IBOR type risk-free rates. So you will very often hear about LIBOR transition, IBOR transition, or transition to new risk-free rates. And those risk-free rates are very different from the LIBOR. I mentioned that there were various tenors which uh, allowed to build a term structure from overnight, spot next, one week, one month, two months, three months, six months, one year. So pretty much the near end of the curve was there with LIBOR. Most of those ex-IBOR rates are now replaced by overnight index rates, which are daily rates. Um, and those rates are very different in nature. So the LIBOR was a risk-free rate, which is considered to be um, an asset risk-free with, with uh, no premium on top of it. Overnight is the same. It's also considered to be risk-free rates. It's used as a benchmark by the market. So that's why it's so important. And the new risk-free rates are overnight base. So for US, it's now called SOFOR. For Sterling, it is SONIA. For Euro, it is ESTER. For Japan, LIBOR, it is TONA. For Swiss LIBOR, it is SARAN. This funding market is a key part of the plumbing because of the size of the market, the wide range of products that it influences. So it's important because you have derivatives like interest rate swaps, basis swaps, OIS, cross-currency basis swaps, swaptions, caps and flows. So the spectrum of, of, of the LIBOR-based instruments is very, very, very wide. And the total notion of LIBOR instruments is around 300 trillion. So it's, it's huge, it's massive. 
So that's why it's a big, big challenge for all market participants, and it will be the number one topic in 2021 for anybody in the fixed income market. One of the key differences between the new reference rates and the old eyeball rates is that the new reference rates are based off actually traded overnight rates, which are far more liquid and therefore more accurate than the old eyeball rates, where the regulators were concerned that these were no longer liquid enough for this key market. Alex focuses on OIS, or overnight index swaps. This is an interest rate swap, where the reference rate is an overnight rate, but the term of the swap is fixed over a specific period. So the first very important data that people need is the fixing itself, So which means the SOFR rates for USD, for instance, or the SONIA rates, or the SARON, or the TIBO, or the ESTER for Euro, and you need that fixing. So what we have, we see liquidity in uh, overnight index swaps. So we, you will see a lot of SOFR OIS, SONIA OIS, uh, ESTER, we'll see a bit a bit of liquidity coming on Tybor and Saron, but they are less developed. I would say that Sonia is the, the most developed, then so forth, then Esther. You find some short-term interest rate futures from the various exchanges, and then you will find derivatives like the basis swaps, so for against LIBOR, for instance, typically, which is something quite important to monitor because you see the difference between so forth and LIBOR. Uh, also, to price existing LIBOR deal, is there has said that you know there, there's a need to have a fallback rate or fall, fallback language to 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 transfer existing LIBOR deals into the new risk free rates. So we will display that rates very very soon on our um, offering. That's also something very important. And on top of those, either broker data or fixing data or fallback. We are also calculating curves, and curves are really, really important in order to price those derivatives. So we have a SOFOR-based curve, and that curve is very accurate because now that we see liquidity on the OIS SOFOR market, we are getting uh, trades executed on TradeWeb, which is partially owned with uh, by uh, Refinitiv. So it means that we can have USD SOFOR OIS on our terminals. And out of that, we create a very, very accurate software curve that then you can use to either discount cash flows of existing rates derivatives. And that is very important. You know, OIS discounting has also been something very popular since a few years because the logic behind is that banks or anybody in a swap needs to discount using the, the most uh, the most liquid funding source, and OIS is a very, very liquid funding source. And we have those curves, OIS curves, built for SOFOR, Esther, Sonia, and it's it's begin, building up on Saron on, and, um, and Tybor. And then what we can do with those curves is that you can price, meaning you can create any kind of swap. Uh, so we have tools in, for instance, in Icon Terminal, such as a swap pricer, or in Excel, we have Excel function where people can value swaps. So if you want to enter into a new swap, being spot starting, forward starting, or calculate the net present value of an, of an existing swap, you can use those curves to project the future cash flows. Because the new rates are references off liquid overnight rates, they don't have forward-looking prices. The old eyeball rates had a term structure or prices along different maturities such as one month to three months. New term structures, therefore, will now need to be calculated for the new reference rates from these overnight rates. I mentioned in the introduction that the new risk-free rates are, are um, backward-looking, uh, whereas the LIBOR was forward-looking. So you don't have that element of term structure as you had in the past with LIBOR where you had an overnight, term next, one month, three months, six months, and you could derive a curve directly from the LIBO. You don't have it anymore with, with SOFOR. So that's why we use the OIS SOFOR contributions that we are getting from either TradeWeb or the, or the inter-dealer brokers, but we are also calculating term rates um, for customers. Even for somebody who, who, who needs to enter into a mortgage, for instance, which used to be uh, against LIBOR three months. Now you don't have that three months point anymore. So what we are building now is the what we call the term rates. So Refinitiv has submitted 
um, Sonia term rates, and we are working on SOFOR term rates, Esther term rates, to, to have that element also of tenors and calculate uh, term rates for what looking based on compounded um, OIS rates. So that's also something very important for the marketplace, as well as providing calculation tools. So people need to be able to calculate their forward cash flows. So we are also working on an Excel spreadsheet and a little app in Icon that calculates compounded rates, which is very important on any on any dates, meaning that even if you have a non-standard swaps, you will be you will be able to calculate your your cash flows uh, using the compounded uh, rates calculator. So that's the things we are working on, and the thing with the the element we think are needed by the market from the numerous conversations we are having with market participants. Many regulators are focusing on a transition to take place over the next 12 months, which doesn't leave much time for both financial firms and their customers to adapt to the new reference rates. From the discussion we've had with all sorts of customers from buy side, corporates, large sales side, everybody now uh, gets ready for the transition meaning that everybody needs the data I've just mentioned. Um, the valuations, the tools are, are all there. And, and as, as I said in introduction, that will be the number one priority in 2021 for a lot of people because LIBOR is meant to stop in 2021. So then you will, you will need to use the uh, alternative risk-free rates and the new risk-free rates and the associated data and, and the tools that we are providing. This is a very large market that is about to change. Some have argued that these funding numbers are the world's most important numbers because so much of our financial system is based upon them. But the transition will involve considerable cost for financial firms. Some products may reference obsolete numbers after the transition has been made. Communicating these changes will be a significant challenge. The old IBOR is embedded in companies' operating models and transition may lead to unexpected windfall losses and gains. The whole financial framework we'll be grappling with these significant changes over the coming 12 months.